Ah, the dream of becoming a millionaire, maybe a billionaire someday, right? Keep working hard, keep doing what you do, and someday you'll be rewarded. You'll be living like a king, a billionaire, a millionaire, a billionaire. Wow, imagine that. Imagine that being a billionaire. Right? So, and everybody's, you know, uh, striving to become richer and richer in the world. It seems that 99% of the people are failing miserably at doing so rather than settling for being happy, the 1% is getting richer and richer. And those 99% are working harder and harder to become part of the 1%. Is that what it is? We're, 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 you know, poor people want to be rich and rich people want to be king. Is that what, is that what it's all about? So there's this uh, Marcus Conti reporting on this new finding according to the Oxfam report. Let's take a look. So Here's Zero Hedge talking about it, and then I'll, uh, we'll dive right into the actual report. And some of the statistics are just absolutely staggering. Right? According to an Oxfam, this is what I've been saying for the last two years. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, just, I sound like a broken record. Income and wealth inequality in this country is, is, is pathetic. Right? Right? I'm, I wasn't the first one to say. According to an Oxfam report released in January 2018, 82% of the world's the worldwide wealth created in 2017 was siphoned to the 1% of the world's richest people. Compare that to the poorest of the poor, 3.7 billion inhabitants of the planet who saw no increase at all in their wealth. Wow, holy smokes. That the 1% are just getting richer. The title of the report, Reward Work, Not Wealth, truly stands up for the 3.7 billion individuals have no, who have nothing to show for their wealth. So this is Zero Hedge reporting, and I just uh, it's, some good, it's good summary stuff, and then we'll, we'll take a look at the report. When politics and business merge, the decks are stacked against the poorest of the poor, while the dice is rigged in favor of the richest of the rich. Right? In influential, influential politicians extend lucrative tax breaks to the wealthiest of the wealthiest, while stripping away even the most basic of social safety nets, like health care coverage and social benefits from the people at the bottom. Where did we hear that before? I thought tax breaks are supposed to trickle down. Right? Trickle down economics, right? Isn't that, isn't that what's going on, right? Trickle down. You give tax breaks to the billionaires, and then they, they, they reciprocate that money. They don't take it and, and, and stash it in offshore tax havens. They, they give it back, right? That's what they do, no. They don't do it. One could applaud any effort that lobbyists that lobbyists undertake that leads some wealth from those. Let me start again. One could applaud any efforts that lobbyists undertook that lead some wealth from those that can afford it to be distributed to those that need it more. Sadly, this isn't what happens. Instead, the current political, economic, and social regime is one where rich get richer and the poor continue to spiral into poverty. That's what's going on. Senator Elizabeth Warren, Pocahontas' idea of a wealth tax as proposed, and hopefully it'll see the light of day as proposed, a tax of 2% on Americans with over, five, uh, with over 50 million in assets and 3% on those with a billion in wealth would help level the field just a bit. Listen to this. According to the senator's economic advisors, this simple equation could raise almost $2.75 trillion in taxes within 10 years. The impact on only 1% of the, the American households. So this move would generate $2.7 trillion for Americans, and, then, and only 1% of the population would, would take a hit. Right, ninety-nine percent of the people would benefit from this move. You think it's a good idea? I do. As things stand today, income uh, income inequality is fueled as a result of tax loopholes <laughs> and tax avoidance and evasion strategies that only the wealthy can afford. Right, those in the lowest tax brackets can't afford to hire crafty tax lawyers and financial wizards to help avoid paying tax. So to make sure income uh, inequality is properly addressed, politicians and bureaucrats will need to reform how income is redistributed from the rich to the less affluent. 
Now, I know you hear that word redistributed. Oh, redistribution of wealth. They want to take it from me and give it to them. No, nobody's talking about you. Unless you're a billionaire watching my podcast, which I highly doubt, maybe just to figure out how you're gonna how you're gonna shut me up. But most billionaires and and millionaires are not watching, you know, my podcast. Right? You're you're in the 99%. Wake up. 99% of 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 us are in this situation ruled by a 1%. How could we get them? Very easy. We just told you one one simple example. You make a law and you tax the shit out of them and bring them back down the size, right? Uh, the only way that can happen is to make sure the decks aren't stacked against the poor, right? All right, so let's look at the report. This is staggering numbers, right? So here's a, here's a great, great statistic that Zero Hedge didn't talk about, right, on page nine of the uh, report. I'll leave the link down below. If you want to see the whole report, uh, the link is down below. In, in country after country where Oxfam works, the space for citizens to speak out is being closed and freedom of speech suppressed. Civil, whatever, an alliance dedicated to strengthening citizens has found that serious threats of civil freedoms now exist in more than 100 countries. Wow, they're saying that, that when people can't communicate, when we have a, we I was supposed to have a First Amendment freedom of speech, but we're slowly losing that. You see how important the freedom of speech is? Here, this study right here just told you. Right? They just told you that, that, that uh, the freedom of speech and the ability to communicate is important. Why? Because you can form unions, you can complain, you can gather and say, no, we're not going to take this anymore. Like, like the yellow vests of France are finally coming together. And doing it like the like the the uh, strong the you know the eighty percent strong in Venezuela are holding out the oligarchy, uh, but in America no 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 because if you if you stand up for yourself and you say no no income and wealth inequality is a is a bad thing then you're 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 labeled with the S word or you're you're you know you're said you're you're seen as lazy and stupid and and but but you know okay so 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 so. Censorship is a bad thing. Why? Because it holds this whole thing in place, right? Listen to some of the numbers. Uh, last year saw the biggest increase in the number of billionaires in history. One more every two days. There are about uh, 200, what is this? $2,042 billionaires worldwide. Nine out of 10 are men. Ah, women. Women. Nine out of ten billionaires are men. You better get busy. Does that piss you off, women? No, because it's not even. It doesn't even. Uh, uh, it doesn't even address most people, right? It's just this one percent of the population. Right? In twelve months, the wealth of this elite group has increased seven hundred and sixty-two billion. This is enough to end extreme poverty seven times over in the world. Can you imagine that? In the period between two thousand six and two thousand fifteen. Ordinary workers saw their incomes rise by an average of just 2%, while billionaires' uh, wealth rose 13%, almost six times faster. 82% of all growth in global wealth in the last year went to the top 1%, while the bottom half of humanity saw no increase at all. Wow. Wow. While billionaires in one year saw their fortunes grow $762 billion, women provided $10 trillion in unpaid care annually to support the global economy. So women are really taking a hit on this one. Not, maybe not so much in the United States where, you know, it's, it's kind of balancing out. But in other countries, women are slaves. New data from Credit Suisse means 42 people now own the same wealth as the bottom 3.7 billion people in the world. And that last year's figure has been uh, revised from 8 to 61 people owning the same as the bottom 50%. The richest 1% continue to own more wealth than the whole of the rest of humanity. Whoa, read that again. The richest 1% continue to own more wealth than the whole of the rest of humanity. That's it, right? The 99% are controlled by the 1% in terms of wealth, 
in terms of financial wealth. So here's, there's more. Well, there's a lot more. Right? So approximately a third of billionaire wealth is derived from inheritance. Ah, that's where it comes from, right? A lot of it. A third, right? Now, isn't, didn't I just hear our, our great president, the great masterful financial mind, Donald J. Trump, say he wants to, uh, he wants to uh, uh, get rid of the inheritance tax completely? Right, so so where, is, where is our country leading? We're, we're led by a, a guy who grew up in a, in a wealth, with a wealthy father that was, got spoon-fed you know, with a silver spoon in his mouth, right? Giving breaks, giving tax breaks to the rich. We already saw that. They made it law. And trying to d- dissolve the inheritance tax. So all of the things that we're talking about get worse, right? Income and wealth inequality continues to widen. Over the next 20 years, 500 people, 500 of the world's richest people will hand over $2.4 trillion to their heirs. That's the inheritance. A sum larger than the GDP of India, a country of 1.3 billion people. Right? So, so inheritance, right? You got to shut those loopholes. You got to close the loopholes. Here's the big one now. This is, what, this is where Conti, you know, this is where I get points again. <laughs> Monopolies. Ah, monopoly. I might keep saying monopoly, oligarchy. Monopolies fueled excessive returns to owners and shareholders at the expense of the rest of the economy. The power of monopoly to generate extreme wealth is demonstrated by the fortune of Carlos Slim. <laughs> this is the, the, uh, the telecommunication wizard in Mexico. The sixth richest man in the world, Carlos Slim. His fortune derives from an almost complete monopoly he has uh, been able to establish over fixed line, mobile and broadband communications in medical. Monopoly, monopoly power is compounded by cronyism, the ability of powerful co- uh, private interests to manipulate public policy to entrench existing monopolies and create new ones. Right, lobbying. It's money in politics. You see what creates it? The money in politics. Politicians get paid off, and they basically enforce the laws that the donors, the the monopolies, the money, they get the money, and here, here's here's the money in one hand, and here's the law. We want you to pass this law, right? Here's the money. Put this in your pocket, and here, pass this law, right? Go to Congress. Take the money. Put put the money in your pocket and and go pass the law, right? And the law is written by the lobbyists and written by the oligarchs and written by the people that want to get a monopoly. It's not written by you. It's written by the 1%. The nine, the, the, our politicians take their marching orders from the 1%, not the 99% that need it, but the 1% that have the ability to go to Washington with four lawyers and petition and, and, a, and a box full of money and give it to the politicians because bribery is legal now. Right? It's all legal, right? It's a, it's a contribution. No, no, no. It's a that was a campaign contribution. That doesn't affect my decisions. That's what all your corrupt politicians say. But they all take the money, and they they enforce the laws. Right? So what's the solution? Is to get rid of these corrupt politicians and get people that represent the the ninety nine percent. How do you do it? I don't know. You kill you know fucking maybe maybe a nuclear option. I don't know. At this point, can we vote them out? It's becoming harder and harder. Because they're all habitual liars. So, monopoly power is compounded by cronyism, the ability of power, powerful private organizations to manipulate public policy to entrench existing monopolies and create new ones. I may have read it twice, but so what? Let's hear it twice. Privatization deals natural resources given away below fair value, corrupt political procurement, or tax exemptions and loopholes are all ways in which well-connected private interests can entrench themselves at the expense of the public. Crony capitalism, right? That's what it's all about, right? It was supposed to be trickle-down economics, but it turns into oligarchy, monopoly. Now, everybody likes to say, oh, yeah, Russian oligarchs, right? Yeah, Russia... Russia uh, is is uh, hyper-capitalism that led to monopoly and led to... uh, uh, to, um, crony capitalism, right, and uh, the oligarchy, right, the oligarchs, the Russian oligarchs, but we have it here too, right, all these billionaires are here as well, right? 
So um, in total, Oxfam has calculated that approximately two-thirds of billionaire wealth is the production of inheritance, monopoly, and cronyism. Two-thirds. Oxford's, uh, uh, Oxfam's survey of 10 countries shows that over half of respondents think that despite hard work, it is difficult or impossible for ordinary people to increase the money they have. Now, that's big, right? Let's talk about that. Most people in this country, in America, say, no, 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 I want to leave the opportunity open for myself to become a billionaire. When you don't realize that you are almost 99.99999% locked out of that opportunity. Only some incredible act of providence can put you into that category at this point because the playing field is no longer level. Now, you might, if you're extremely handsome or extremely beautiful woman and you marry into wealth, well, that is a possibility. But that's, again, the 99.9999999% of the population could ever achieve that. But to actually work and compete with someone like Amazon is, is theoretically impossible because of the competitive playing field. The, f- the second you get moving, moving, they try to stomp you down and own you. If you don't believe it, I mean, I don't, I don't know how else, I don't know how else to explain it. In total, Oxfam calculates. Okay, so, uh, all right, so that's that's really all I wanted to say about that. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty powerful stuff. You know, income and wealth inequality in our country is not getting any better. We're moving in a way. We have, you know, I, I guess a third of the country that thinks that that the direction, the current direction of the country under. Donald J. Trump is is the right direction, right? Because I don't know why. Because because they put social issues, I guess, first. You know, uh, it's it's an immigrant problem. It's a it's a it's a gun problem. It's a it's a problem with you know some other social. It's a you know minority problem, Muslim problem, Jew problem, whatever the problem, right? But no one, everyone fails to look at the real problem, which I've been saying all along, which is crony capitalism, which is, which is oligarchy in our country, exactly in the banking industry, right? The banks, the six top banks control everyone. They control, you know, and, and, and 10,000 publicly traded companies, at least the top tier of those publicly traded companies, control so much wealth. The way to do it is, in, enforce some of these laws, right, which is you have to deflate them, bring them back down to size. They do not reciprocate. The only way out of this mess, unless you want to be a slave for the rest of your life and sign your children into slavery and their children into slavery, the problem is getting worse, not better. The only solution for that is to create laws that are written by the people, right, the 99%, right, Start off by, you know, at least acknowledging it. I guess, you know, acknowledging it first is the first step. But you do have one contestant in the presidential race right now, right? Uh, actually, two, right? So you have Sanders saying it. I know there's, and, and people will all immediately jump to the conclusion that that he's a sellout. He has no spine. He's a he took two hundred forty million dollars from his people and didn't apologize for for not for not continuing. He he sucked Hillary Clinton's dick. He's a Russian. He took a bath. He 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 went on a naked honeymoon in 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 uh in in Russia. His wife had a bogus deal. I heard every one of them. Right, every one of them. Forget about the man. Forget about the myth. Forget about the legend. Talk about the policy of. The one person in the field who is, is, is saying income and wealth inequality, and I think that that's, that's where our fair country uh, should come. Now, so I say, oh, look, can't he spinning for Bernie? No, spinning for the truth, spinning for to rid oligarchy. Any contestant in the political campaign, the arrowhead, right? Don't kid yourself. The president of the United States has voice, has a has a bully pulpit, has a soapbox to stand on and talk to the people, right? Trump does an amazing job with his Twitter account, but what he voices is absolute and utter nonsense and bullshit. You know, wind, wind turbines give you cancer. Yeah, okay. Right? And other nonsense, right? Rather than talking about the real problem, which is income and wealth inequality in this country. Marcus Conti reporting, 